Hello, hello. It's a sunny day here, nice and clear. A little bit hot. You can tell when it's gonna be scalding because there's a strange mist that forms around the horizon about two fingers width, you know, from wherever your eyesight is. It's about two finger width and you're like, oh my God, it's gonna be a blaze today. But it did start out at 63. The wind is still slightly cooler um, for this time of day and I'm appreciating it so very much. Yeah, birds everywhere, okay. So, the first morning that I was here, I saw an ibis. I was like, lit up. Ibis, are you, are you for real? Are you kidding me? And told my parents, and they're like, are you sure those are around here? I said, I looked it up and it said they migrate here. So, we could have a lot of cold coming in earlier than usual for our, if you're on our continent. Um, because so was the yellow butterfly, the sulfur. They usually only hatch out at spring and fall, and that's it. That's it. But that ibis was here, and I told my mom about it. She's like, oh, okay. I said, Mom, I hope you get to see it. And uh, yesterday morning, she did. And she's like, had you not already told me, my mind would have just dismissed it as all these herons and egrets around here. She's like, I did. I saw it. I saw it. And then this morning, my dad was out here with us on this. If that's what you're looking at, that's the ceiling of the boat dock, right? And my dad was out here in my eyeball. He was out here with us, and a pair of them flew over, and he's like, oh, yep, there they are. So it was really neat. He's taking time to stop and enjoy nature, and that we all got to see it. That's, who, that's who's here at the lake house, my parents and me, and myself. Um, but lots of beauty and wonder. It was neat to watch the great white heron um, nesting in these trees in the peninsula out here and where they can't get along during the daytime. They each need to have their own territory and space and they'll chase each other and squawk and not fight with feathers, but like fight with noise, like get out of here. And um, they have to have enough space and distance between them to not feel encroached upon. But what's wild when it starts coming evening time, all of that conflict, all of that, staking claim and everything else it melts away and then there'll be i don't know 50 60 70 of them that nest in these front little trees little pff, they're probably you know 150 feet tall but anyways and so before the sun comes up then they move across to this little inlet by the neighbor's house and they're all in their stark white waiting around in the um in the water hyacinth and taking their time until that lady comes out to sweep her boardwalk and spray her poisons, and then they go. <laughs> I was kind of like this. I'm like, oh, no way, no way, and the wind was blowing in our face, but we had already had so much joy, it didn't matter, right? And that's my prayer for all of us here. Joy to the world. It's not me to the world. It's joy to the world. That's the virus I would love to spread around because that's where miracles do come from. That is resurrection power. It's your own ownership of stake and claim of I am happy and I have the rights to my happiness. When these things are squeezing in, trying to put the finger in the master of puppets energy on you, some of you might want to check out a Pisces read if that is a lot of what you've been experiencing. Because that's like the dark Lord. That's like the, the evil because the word live turned backwards is evil. It's like being locked out of your own blessing because something else is trying to make you, force you, push you. And take away uh, your joy, your good feeling inside. Because when we go through trauma, the first thing to disappear is our joy and our activity in joyousness with ourselves. You know, either you might still do the same activities like biking, but you're so up in your head that you're not getting the relief from that form of joy that you used to engage with. So maybe like me here, stop, take a deep breath, back up a little. If you're like going one step forward and two steps back, maybe you're pushing coercing, obligating, forcing, putting yourself in a position of uh, stress in order to perform. But you don't have to perform, my friend. You're here to live. That, that performance is like a maniacal mind saying that others have these expectations of you or you're catering truly to the expectations of others and not knowing how to break the cycle. I did have a little private chit chat video, which I don't know how it uploaded itself, but I mean, I put it to the camera, but I had it on private and it turned on yesterday. <laughs> and it was really about, it's the little things that add up 
to the big stuff coming in that you don't want to go through. So when you keep saying, okay, just one more time, okay, just this time, okay, they mean well, da 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 da, whatever it is, I'll paste it with all those excuses. That's what it means to paint the turd, okay? And you don't want that on your plate for breakfast, lunch, or dinner ever, ever. But it was talking about being a big difference between volunteering and being volunteered for something. Because volunteering means of your own volition, your own desire to, okay? The giving of yourself. When somebody else is doing it for you and you play into that, that creates like a backspin on the systems. And you talk about karmic energy, yeah. Even though it was something quite small and it's like, no, I, I didn't agree to do that thing. I had already done my part, got it all ready, made the stuff, got it all ready so that y'all can move forward in it. But a lot of times you can be surrounded with people who think you're way more capable than everyone else. And that can pigeonhole you. Because even if you are capable, it doesn't mean that you are able at this time. Willing or able, you see? Because there's very little time that I get to spend out here before it's so hot that it can make me sick. It's like, well, if that was the case, we could have waited until I'm ready if it's so reliant on me. Which means I should have some say-so. Some volunteerism, some volition, right? Instead of it being done for me, because that's obligation and that is Saturnian. It creates attachments. It will create relationships with attachments, not just with those people, with anybody, whether it's career-wise, lover-wise, parent-child, whatever. It's so strange to witness what was once invisible to my mind. And then, ooh, came right up. Mm -hmm, that was the fish this time, not the alligator. He sometimes sleeps on this dock, and that's why I'm like, I'm not getting out in that water. There are three of them that sit right around here. So, but I am enjoying it, and I am relaxing. And I just wanted to check in with you guys and let you know the little bits and things that are going on. Nothing extremely profound, but extraordinary is found in the ordinary. So maybe these ordinary moments are helping us all level up, right? Mm -hmm. That's my heart for you guys, for myself too, right? So, anyways, I would love to have you subscribe to my channel here. If you'd do me a favor and tap that like button before you head off this channel and help us rise up to the top, I'd appreciate it. Also, I look forward to chatting with you in the comments down below. Until then, bye.